No, baby, that's for somebody else. We're just going to keep you right where you're at right now. It doesn't matter what you think. The Wrestling Realm presents Break It Down with Brian H. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this edition of Break It Down with Brian H. I'm your host, Brian H. Waters. Now, I was sitting here and I decided... It's Christmas Eve, why not? Um, I know I said that the programming for this show would kind of be different. It would be one of those things where I had to figure out where I was going to get in, where I could fit in, you know, between doing Christmas shopping and getting gifts for the kids. But I figured it out. I got off of work. I said, you know what? I'm sitting here watching TV. Why not talk some wrestling? So that's what I did. So, folks episode 103 first and foremost you know where to find us and if you may not be aware the wrestling realms break it down with brian h is officially available on iheart radio so for those out there who may use iheart radio tell your friends guess what break it down with brian h is available there and of course spotify google apple you name it i'm there youtube as well so yeah, I'm going to do another traditional video. I'll bring the video back, I promise. I'll bring it back by the end of uh, the week. But like I said, I just wanted to hurry up and do something because I wanted to talk some wrestling, man. <clears throat> Where we start? Let's start off with AOP and Seth Rollins. I always said Seth Rollins needed this. He needed to be a heel. I love the fact that AOP is not being wasted. This is something that's perfect for them. They beat up Kevin Owens on Raw earlier, but what was not to be mistaken was the end of the night, Samoa Joe. I tweeted from Brian H. Waters that Samoa Joe is gangster. They went out there to attack him, but Joe would not get up. He wasn't going to get up. He said, no, nah, you know what? Y'all got to come through me if y'all want to break this table. And it was just a testament that, look, you're not just going to tell me what to do. You could punk these other announcers, but I'm Samoa Joe. So I really enjoyed this. I love this. I love the fact that Joe is, in this case, being a face because he works as a tweener. It's believable. Because he's not going to play to the crowd so much. He's not going to seek the crowd approval. Kind of like Stone Cold Steve Austin. Sure, he did the beard things, but he didn't seek for you to cheer for him. And that's the way I look at what Samoa Joe is not going to do. So I'm really excited about this. I want to see what happens. He could be the guy to... I, well, no, I, I guess we got to slow down, right? Seth Rollins was not successful in taking the title for Rey Mysterio. Because of that, they wanted to beat him up. I don't know. I was hoping Rollins won the title, to be honest with you. But I want to see Samoa Joe as a WWE champion. I don't know when it's going to happen. I hope it's going to happen. But if Rollins was to take the U.S. title from Rey Mysterio, then maybe that could transition for Joe taking the title from Rollins eventually. Or we don't even have to go there. I think I thought Joe was hurt. But clearly he's not. But I will have I have to say this. This guy has set his post wrestler career up in a big way. He's just phenomenal at broadcasting. You go there, you watch the matches, and you listen to him make the calls. It's just great. Kind of reminds you of Taz, but quite frankly, I think he's better than Taz. I never really thought Taz was that great. I just thought he was good for what they had and who was needed or whatever, but I never thought like Taz never blew me away. CM Punk was better than Taz, to be honest with you. If you remember when Punk was injured and he was doing commentary, I thought he was better than Taz. Miz at one point was doing some stuff. I thought he was better than Taz. So I was never really sold on Taz being like the next Jerry Lawler, a great wrestler, especially a great wrestling heel to become a great announcer, heel announcer. Nah, so, but let's move on. I want to go on to SmackDown. Daniel Bryan and The Miz, once bitter enemies, decided after they were attacked by Corbin and 
Dolph Ziggler, it was decided that these two were going to team up. And they were victorious in the main event. Now, I'm wondering, is this to start something bigger down the line? Is this going to be a big feud, a big clash between Daniel Bryan and The Miz? I feel like this got tag team championships written all over it just because that's what the WWE likes to do at times. I really hope not, but that's just the way I feel, folks. I, I feel like this will be one of those moments where they say, oh, yeah, let's make them a tag team. and Let's throw the belts on them. Really hope they don't do that. It's not necessary. This is one of the times where you'll very, very rarely hear me say it. They don't need the championships. Don't need it at all but um king corbin Dolph ziggler which we know corbin is kind of playing that tag team role for ziggler because i don't i don't know it's a triple threat match next week or is a or smackdown for the wwe championship or maybe it's the the number one contendership yeah for the wwe championship daniel bryan miz and king corbin so we'll see how that goes but yeah let's move on um so, matter of fact, I'm going to go right into my tapped out. Yes, I got a tapped out this week. Here's our tapped out segment of the week. All right, my tapped out. No way, Jose. I, it, there's nothing I like about this dude. And I know some people may say, oh, why are you being so hard? Uh, I'm just annoyed, like. This is all you bring into the table. To me, what I see is a guy coming out there, dancing every week, giving an opportunity for indie wrestlers to get a $100 paycheck or however they pay him, which is fine. But I feel like, come on now, is there, don't you want to do something more than just jump around and say, no way, Jose? I mean, at that point, they can use extras. So I'm just not feeling the character. He's beat by Rusev. And then afterwards, they kind of celebrated or they danced. And I was thinking this would have been a spot reserved for the Godfather where Rusev would have either beat. Well, no, I would have had Rusev lose. No, actually, let me correct myself. Spot for the Godfather. Robert Godfather, they have a match or set up for a match. Godfather offers him the ladies. Rusev says, you know what? Fine. Because Godfather would have said, look, I know you've been dealing with Lana. You need to get your mind right. Therefore, I got, um, you know, I got something for you. So that's where I'm at with that, folks. Uh, just no way, Jose. Bye bye. So, yeah, let me um, I'm going to go ahead and take a quick break. I'll be back right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you tune in to my new podcast, Breaking Through the Glass Ceiling with Brian H. Not only do I share my story, but I invite guests to come on and share their stories. What did it take for them to break through the glass ceiling? You can find this show on anywhere you get your podcast. So let me name them. Apple Podcasts. Make sure you subscribe. And I'm back to break it down with Brian H. And um, back, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you check out the new podcast brought to you by B Waters Productions it's called Breaking Through the Glass Ceilings with Brian H. Uh, this uh, past episode, I had my good friend, Kelsey Nicole Nelson, as she discussed her career. How did she become a journalist as well as you may have known maybe you didn't remember lavar ball she interviewed him and earned his respect so we talked about that and much more i want to talk alistair black and buddy murphy i love the fact that the wwe used enhancement talent this past week on monday night raw alistair black was victorious over a guy named of dion rusman Buddy Murphy, victorious over a guy named Joey Asa. What you saw was in one upsmanship between the two. Because these two are going at it as to see who is better than the other. Alistair Black wanted a fight. Buddy Murphy brought the fight. Now, Black was victorious at TLC, but Murphy isn't done. I think these two are the perfect opponents for each other. It's a match that you always want to see. So I'm excited. I can't wait to see what comes next from these two. 
I think they'll have, this could be an incredible opener for the Royal Rumble. And then these two will get into the Rumble match. You know, back in the day, and, and maybe we'll do something, um, a best of Royal Rumble show. But back in the days, that was really cool was just seeing some of those undercard matches from the Royal Rumble. You may remember the Hardy Boys versus the Dudley Boys at Royal Rumble 2000. Jeff Hardy jumping off the taxi at Madison Square Garden. So, well, let's move on. Let's talk ladies wrestling, the women's division. We're going to start off with Charlotte Flair, victorious over Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green was signed to WWE months ago. I believe she got hurt, but she's back. So she made her Monday Night Raw debut. And for those who do not know, she is the wife or girlfriend, fiance of Zack Ryder, who was also on Raw, lost to Drew McIntyre. But I love this match because Charlotte reminded me of her dad, the nature boy, Ric Flair. Ric Flair made a career off of putting people over. Whether he was winning or losing, you would go out there in a match with Ric Flair, you would look so good, and you would have the crowd believing. He would have the crowd believing that this guy could beat him for the NWA World Championship. And just at that last moment, Flair slapped that figure four on you, and it was over. And that's what this match kind of reminded me of. When it was all said and done, Charlotte hit the figure eight, hit that bridge up, and Ch- Chelsea Green was tapping out. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the career of Chelsea Green in the WWE. Great job by Charlotte. I know a lot of people, they like to say that Charlotte's stale. They want to say that she's not what she used to be. But Charlotte has done it all except win money in the bank in the Royal Rumble, but she's done it all in the business that what else can she do besides give back? And yes, I would love to see her break her dad's record, but the main thing is that she's going out there, she's still performing at a high level, and she's not stale to me. Sure, she may be losing or she may be winning matches like this, but she's getting new talent over. Moving on to SmackDown. You know, there's this thing going on with Bailey and Dana Brooke. Now, Dana Brooke lost, and then she wanted a rematch, and she lost to Bailey again. Now, I know y'all going to say, if you listen to the show on the regular, thank you, first and foremost, but I know you're going to say I'm hating because everybody knows I like Dana Brooke, and I don't like Batista, and they're dating. But here's the thing. Since that happened, we have been seeing more television time from Dana Brooke. And I think she's been misplaced. Dana was on the verge of doing something cool, it looked like, when Emma was there. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Then she was with Charlotte Flair. And I thought this was going to be good. Now, as much as I would like to say she was like Charlotte's Arn, we all know that she's not as talented as Arn Anderson was. But I thought that she could have been... Not a necessarily a lackey, but a good manager. And, you know, when she had to get her hands dirty, she had to do that while she was learning. Now, I'm happy to see her on TV, but I don't know, man. I just, I, I don't know. So, but shout out to Dana Brooke. She get more TV time, but Bailey was victorious. And then, of course, her and Sasha, they would, you know, do some attacking, which led to Lacey Evans coming out there. And then Lacey Evans and Sasha ended in a double count out. This is a feud that I enjoy watching. Now, you got Sasha Banks taking pictures with Lacey Evans' daughter and then teasing her in front of her. So whenever you get that type of realism, I always enjoy that. I think that's really cool. It makes sense. So, But let's also move on. Carmella was victorious over Sonya Deville. I know a lot of people was wondering, like, what was the deal with this match? I think it's always cool because the thing is you want to keep these women's matches going regardless of what you can create a story there, but it's better. You know, it's really cool. Now we're at the point where we're having two and three women's matches. Now, granted, this may have been a quick match, but you got to see Carmella. You got to see um, Sonya Deville. And I don't believe this is over yet. Now, one of the things you may have watched that was um, she was celebrating 
when the New Day came out and she was tending and dancing with them, who was later on victorious over Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro. But yeah, this was uh, very interesting to say the least. So, our truth, Akira Tozawa chased each other around all night on Monday to find to try to become the new 24-7 champion. However, the new champion is Santa Claus. And it looked like the referee was tired and he was done. And so now we're wondering what's going on with the title. Um, who knows? Um, oh, of course, it says chasing. All right, so it looks like he won. Yeah, he won the title at the end of the night. So good shout out to R-Truth. I mean, this title has him, his name, his likeness. It's him. This was made for him. Nobody else, if you had them in that situation, would have done this title that many honors. That's just my opinion. I thought this was this is just perfect for him. Let's go back to the ladies. Becky Lynch. I know many people has pegged her as the 2019 Raw or in 2019 Female Wrestler of the Year. Personally, uh, I don't know. I think, yeah, you kind of have to just because she's been a, a long reigning champion. She was at one point the hottest woman in the business. But Rhea Ripley has been slowly but surely knocking that, um, you know, chip coming up on the heels until she blew the door off in December with victories over Sasha and Charlotte, victories over Shayna Baszler at War Games and her team, then becoming the, soul, the survivor at survivor series and then later becoming the nxt champion so she's had a phenomenal year so i'm on the edge i probably would give it to becky slightly because she may not bend it summerslam i mean uh, wrestlemania and survivor series so i would have to give it to her but we cannot discount rhea ripley and now let's move on as um matter of fact i'm gonna go around the net for this one i got a quick uh thing i want to talk about so let's go around the net. Around the net brought to you by B Waters Productions. Make sure if you have photos you want to get done or you have videos that you want to get done, contact B Waters Productions. Simply going on Instagram.com slash B Waters Productions or going to BrianHWaters.com. So one of the first things I have to talk about. I hope you guys were able to check out on the WWE Network table for three. We saw the nation. Uh, uh, it was called the dominant. Uh, what was it called? The nation. I forgot what they called it, but it was nation of domination. They discussed how um, they discussed how they got started. So, which members was it? The Godfather, D'Lo Brown, and Mark Henry. You think about all these groups. The Nation of Domination has some huge players. And and I'm talking about the the one that, I mean, obviously Ron Simmons and Crush, they kind of had did their thing with this thing already. As David said, they thought they put Owen in the tick white people off, which I thought that was interesting for them to say that. But here's the thing. Mark Henry, future world champion. D'Lo Brown, future European and intercontinental champion. Godfather, future intercontinental champion. And one of the things that was interested, first, he before he found out he was going to become the Godfather, they were redoing the Papa Shango character. So check it out because you'll see with Jerry Lawler, the sketch he had drew. And then The Rock, the one of the biggest stars in the business. So this is one I think you'll enjoy. I think you will really understand how much the nation of domination or the nation impacted and the big impact they had on the attitude era and the Monday night wars. So let's move on. Matt Hardy discussed how long he plans to wrestle. And he says, if he's utilized correctly three to four years, so he wants to help make newer talent. He's done that in the past, but it takes weeks of storytelling to do correctly. So, you know, we see Matt Hardy kind of job out the past couple of weeks. So he discussed that. So who knows? 
Sammy Callahan is running his mouth again. Now, anybody knows I'm not a Sammy Callahan fan at all. But, you know, some of you fans like him, so whatever. He think the Impact Wrestling is the closest thing to the Attitude Era. We're the only company right now that's not afraid to try to... That's not afraid to offend people, try new things. We're not afraid to push the envelope. We give you an edgy product. And we're not going to apologize for every single thing like other companies happy just collecting the paycheck and just being a toy on the shelf i saw myself as a top guy i had to go out and prove it and i've done just that as soon as i got there they wanted to change everything about me and i knew it wouldn't work i could have sucked it up and probably been on raw or smackdown but i'm not complacent to be a third or fourth guy i want to be a top guy and i've been able to do that i've proven that a normal white kid from ohio can be the face of a company when that's not the norm because I connect with people. Eh, okay. I don't think um I, I I look, here's the thing. He could say all this stuff, but how many people are watching Impact Wrestling? How many homes what's the hut levels for Impact Wrestling? Yes, I'm a television major, television producer. Hut levels. Homes using television. What's the hut levels for Impact Wrestling? That's what I want to know. I would love for it to be more. But when you're doing stuff, when you're on Access TV or you're on Twitch, it's hard. It's not TNT. It's not TNN or what was the other state? Spike TV. It's not USA. So we'll see. Shout out Stardom Women to compete at New Japan Pro Wrestling Wrestle Kingdom 14. So I'm not going to sit up here and say I keep up with stardom that much, but I'm excited that the women are going to be on this show. I know a lot of great women that's in WWE and AEW come from there. So I'm looking for that to be really good. So yeah, Rusev says he's single and ready to mingle. Um, yeah, about that, man. <laughs> <laughs> about that this is uh certainly interesting um you know and that's what i said when he danced with um no way jose i don't know it's just one of those things who knows so but yeah it's a lot going on in the professional wrestling business and i just had to get here and talk about it because otherwise the next show later on this week is going to be a very long show and i don't want to do that so ladies and gentlemen i'm going to wrap things up make sure you are subscribed to the podcast make sure you're sharing it with your friends do me a favor go on apple Podcasts. you want to give me a christmas gift go on apple podcast and drop a five star rating that will be highly appreciated then i want you to go to breaking through glass ceilings i want you to check out my show where you hear me talk about my story as being as i turned down the wrestling business to stay in medicine how i worked in a nutrition storeroom where i essentially worked with former hustlers and former addicts to say the least who was turning their life around and then i was i was coming up they would help motivate me while i was in college and then when I left and then came back to Johns Hopkins Medicine to work in media relations, as I am now a two-time award-winning producer. So I want you to check that out. Then go on my social media and check out my award-winning production called In Case You Missed It. And then also check out the episode with Kelsey Nicole Nelson, folks. So, yeah, I'm talking about myself. This is my show. But I appreciate all you listeners. So... If you're out there listening the day after this has been posted, Merry Christmas. And, you know, if you don't, happy holidays, folks. I appreciate your time, your effort. I appreciate the time you give me to listen to this show. So thank you very much. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Follow The Real Dwayne Allen at Dwayne Allen 24 Make sure you follow me at Brian H. Waters. And together, follow us at wrestling realm like the facebook fan page like the subscribe to the youtube page follow us on instagram until the next time folks i'm brian h waters so long everybody